episode 236 of uh, Murder Master Music Show. This is the Universal Hip Hop Museum Roundtable. What's up? Uh, I got my host, Mac J. It's your boy Prez, UGSForLife.com. How's everybody doing? Man, I'm good, Prez, man. One and only clientele. Oh, yeah. I'm excited up? about this one. Fine, tell oh, special co host uh, this evening. Um, first off, before we start bringing people on, because the boards are lit up a little bit, uh, tell everybody about the Universal Hip Hop Museum. Oh, man, I'm, I'm just going to give a uh, just a brief, but I'm sure, you know, all the uh, distinguished, you know, guests that we're going to have on will definitely be able to uh, elaborate, you know, more. Uh, essentially, you know, the, the, the Universal Hip Hop Museum is a museum that will help to establish, preserve, and protect the history of hip-hop universally, worldwide, from its inception in the Bronx to reaching everybody in every borough, every city, every hamlet, every village, everywhere around the world, man. You know, we we know, we all know what hip-hop has done for us, and the the museum is a way – to help to preserve, protect that history, but also bring in new programs, new education, new ways of doing hip hop. You know, we've always thought outside the box, and this is just one of those things that's going to be for us, by us in the hip hop community, man. And I'm sure the people coming on will be able to just tear it up, man, and elaborate a yeah. whole lot more. It's real talk, real talk. Since we got a lot of folks on tonight, I'm just gonna uh, I'm gonna name off the area code, bring each of you on. And then from there, we're just going to go on a roundtable discussion. Uh, just uh, introduce yourself, as I uh, mentioned, the area code. Uh, you're live right now, 412. How you doing? Paradise Gray. What's going on? Man, what's hey, up? What's up? Oh, we got you here on the show. Um, I'm going to bring on an- uh, another caller, 917. Uh, this is Rocky Buchanan uh, from the Universal Hip Hop Museum. How you doing? How hey, you welcome doing, to my the show, man. Huge honor. Welcome. Huge honor. Um, we're going to bring on another one. We got uh, 718. Peace, everybody. It's Grand Music Theater, created a scratch. What's up? Wow. What's man, up? It was, hey, welcome to the show, man. Huge, huge honor. Um, Thank you, man. Yeah, We got uh, 254. Somebody say ho. Listen, this is oh. MC Shot Rock. Oh. The, first, hey, the wow. first female MC of hip hop culture, the female that started off the every female that you hear today. The queen. MC Shot Rock, formerly of the Funky Four Plus One. I'm in here representing Absolutely. the Universal Hip Hop Museum. Peace. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Now we got we got one more for now. Eight one eight. This is already legendary. Eight one eight. Yes, yeah, yeah. That's that's that West Coast number, you know. Curtis Blow originally from New York. Uh, Curtis uh, Blow. And basketball. Curtis Blow. Basketball the is my basketball is my favorite sport. I like the way they dribble up and down the court. And LeBron James is on TV right now. <laughs> Holy cow! Yes, sir. Hold it down. Hold it down. Yes, sir. Uh, so. So let's let's just this get right crazy. into it. This is you know, crazy. I, yeah, I just want to say this to kick things off a little bit. Um, this, you know, what we do here at the Murder Master Music Show, UGSForLife.com, is we're all about the preservation. We've had uh, uh, people like mm-hmm. uh, you know Chuck D, DMC, all the way to Spice One, Two Live Crew, you name it. And, and now, of course, uh, uh, everybody here tonight. And I want to first off, I want to thank you for taking the time to come on the show. But also, I want to thank you. For preserving the legacy of hip hop, because right now it's on life support. Yeah, guys. It it's, sure it's is. not looking good, and we, and we need we need what you're doing. We need right now. Yeah, show. Sure. We need y'all, like, man. Because y'all. me and prayers, dude, man. Like we we from an era where we, we we was blessed with the opportunity to have music that was made for like us. We was like the kids of what y'all was doing. Like, I remember meeting Curtis Blow at the Chicago Black Expo. Like, I remember that mm. type of shit. And it was like, this is like, yeah, we can listen to the music of our parents, but the music y'all was making, it felt like it was for us. And for us to give something back to our children, this this, this museum is, people will take trips to this museum <laughs> to show their kids, you know what I'm saying? 
Absolutely. It's like the preservation. So me and Prez, that's what, that's what we own. Preserving well, the hip-hop, you know, especially if y'all still making music. Well, this is MC Shot Rock, and of course, y'all, everybody has introduced themselves, and we have Rock and Big Hannah, who's on, on um, the telephone right now. He is the president, you know, of the museum. The mm-hmm. bottom line is that this is not about the Bronx. We all know it started in the Bronx, but this is about every MC, DJ, B-girl, B-boy that's out there that have a legacy that needs to be preserved. You know, exactly. it's like a lot of people don't know, you know, they know it started in the Bronx, but they don't know the history of the Bronx. They don't know the history of Queens. They don't know the history of California. They don't know the history of, of Las Vegas. All these artists that come up out of here that has did something for the culture, you know, to say, listen, you know, I was there. You know, I helped move this culture forward. This is what the Universal Hip Hop Museum will do. It will preserve the legacy for, for the MCs and the DJs and the B-girls and B-boys around the world. You know, so when the kids, their get, kids get older and then you have, you know, people that come that don't know the history, we're about preserving. And it's not just about one borough or one city or, or, or the Bronx. It's about all of us right. preserving the history of the artists that's out there today, present, past, and future. No doubt. Very well, uh, very well a, said. That, that was definitely had to be said, yes. I, w- I want to... Uh, so, who, who, who is the gentleman that said... Uh, uh, the gentleman that was a DJ? Grand was it? Grand was it Theodore? Yeah, Grand Wizard, Wizard. Theodore, yeah. please uh, yes, sir. do me a favor. Um, explain to everybody who you are and uh, exactly you know uh, when you started doing what you do. Um, um, Grand Wizard Theodore, um, spelled with uh, two Z's. Um, I I got into this um, to this culture and to this art form through my older brother Mean Gene and Grandmaster Flash. Um, they was the ones that um, when I first seen the two turntables and the uh, two turntables and mixer and the microphone right there is when I decided to, um, that's what I wanted to do, you know. I, I feel that I was born into this culture, into this art form, because I can remember since I was seven, eight years old, it was all around me, you know, going to the train stations and, and, and seeing the graffiti on the trains and the graffiti on the buildings and on the streets and, you know, uh, going walking past the park and seeing the B-Boys B-Boying and, and seeing my brother and Flyers hook up their equipment and, and, and doing block parties and, and, and stuff like that. So I was definitely born into this culture. And um, I feel that, you know, the the hip-hop museum – you know, I want my kids and my kids' kids to be able to go to the museum and learn about, you know, me and, and, and Grandmaster Flash and the Zulu Nation and, 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 and Curtis Blow and Melly Mel and, and Grandmaster Flash want to preserve this history. Just like you go to the museum now, to the Museum of, of, of Natural History, and learn about our natural history. I think it's only right to have a hip-hop museum of natural oh, yeah. history, you know, because mm-hmm. it's only right. And I'm glad that 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 Shah Rock said, you know, what she said, you know, as far as like, you know, um, um, hip hop started in in New York City in the Boogie Down Bronx, but you got other boroughs and stuff like that 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 had their contribution, like Queens and Brooklyn and Uptown mm-hmm. and Downtown and, and and stuff like that. So this is not only for the people of the Bronx. This is just for everybody that's into this culture and that's into this art form. But you have to oh, really yeah, just, tell them what you did for the culture. You have to tell them. Uh, you were better than scratch, did you? Yes. yes, yes. I I'm I'm the DJ that 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 brought I I could say I was a you know the first DJ prodigy by by creating the scratch, you know. Um wow. you know, just taking the needle and putting it on the record and and rubbing it back and forth and forth and back and and making it rhythmic and making it musical and giving the DJ a chance to express himself through rhythm and and and, and stuff like that. And I also created another style called needle dropping, when I can pick up the needle and drop it in the grooves of the record, 
and the record actually sound like it's looping, you know. So right. that's what a lot of the DJs so, do today in the turntable list and stuff like that. And I just feel very honored to be able to be a part of something that's 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 bigger than I am, you know. And, and a lot of you know DJs amazing, don't know. You know what's amazing about this too is, uh, you know, what I'm saying other cats like uh, DJ Ready Red. Um, the guy, you know, for those of you listening who don't know who he is, he's the guy who, uh, who made Tony Montana sing on a record. Um, and mm-hmm. Mr. Mix, those are two other DJs that don't get credit for their contributions. Um, mm-hmm. And we need we need to focus on that. But I also, uh, to everybody, uh, whoever wants to can pick up on this. Uh, the art community in hip-hop is overlooked, too. Uh, my friend um, Six, his brother, uh, Dream Francisco from the Bay Area, He's the graffiti right. king out there in the West Coast. Uh, he passed away in uh, 2000. He was actually murdered. This guy oh, uh, uh, was a huge part of the art culture uh, around the world. Well, we need to preserve yeah. art as well. Are you guys going to be focusing on art in this museum too? Oh, absolutely. 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 Yeah, I, I feel that it should be a place where you can go and 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 read and and look at all the artists that's not here with us no more you know and 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 see their contributions and stuff like that and and just have they you know be able to, their families can go and and see you know what what the contributions they have made to this art form and and I think that's very important you know for us to have something like that you know pa- paradise yeah, yeah. Uh, uh his brother uh I want to bring on his brother his brother is here with us uh six Talk a little bit about your brother, Mike hey, Stream. I want to make sure the folks uh, out there know who he is and what he contributed to the game. No, man, pretty much one of these style originators here on the West Coast, man. You know, start writing in the early 80s, 90s. Influenced by a lot of uh, East Coast cats like Phase 2 and all of them. You know, right. He brought, that, he brought that, 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 that West Coast kind of funk to the game. You know, a lot of folks uh, think of graffiti, they think about the East Coast and that, but when you come down like Cali, especially the Bay, we have a certain style around here. My brother and his fucking homeboys were pretty much the mm-hmm. pioneers for that stuff. And, right. uh, you know, right. it, it, he's been featured all around. We even have a holiday. If you open every February, you know, uh, on the day of the death, we have a holiday. It's, not, it's recognized by the city. You know, uh, it's pretty much a day to put the guns down. It's Dream Day. Much and respect. We all, we, we all put events up. So, you know, uh, his influence is out there still. But, you know, we always got to keep it out there. Um Hell, uh, he was uh, on a mural on um, one of the KRS One videos, the Hip Hop List video. I think it was a uh, where was he present in between? It was in between, he's he, he and Jam Master J. Yeah, right on wow. the. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Well, wow. solid. This Much is respect. this is client. This is client again. Um, Rocky, can you, can you just give us a little bit about the history of how you got started and and you know what motivated you? To, to really want to, you know, take on this venture and, and, and do the, you know, Universal Hip Hop Museum? Well, I got started many, many years ago in the at the end of the disco era. Uh, you know, hip hop basically, you know, grew out of the disco era here here in New York City. Disco was real big, but, but the kids uptown in Harlem and the Bronx, uh, they, they weren't really into the disco, you know. Their, their parents and their sisters and brothers, you know, the teenagers, they were listening to Sly and the Family Stone and 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 uh, the Jacksons and James Brown. James Brown. So, yeah, my my cousin was P. D. J. Jones, so he was a big mobile DJ. You know, he was kind of like a disco DJ, but he didn't play a lot of disco. He played a lot of funk and soul, and he was a mobile DJ. So I used to travel around with him you know, from the Bronx and different clubs in Manhattan. And then he gave me my break, and I started DJing at a very young age, like 15, 16 years old. But the reason why I got involved in this project is because there's just a need to preserve hip-hop culture. And uh, I, I ran into a real estate developer named Young Wu, and he was getting ready to build a uh, – he was trying to take over a building here in the Bronx called the Kingsbridge Armory, and he mm-hmm. he he came up he came up to me and basically said that he wanted to add a music component to his building. And when I thought about it, I said, you know, there's been so many attempts to try to get a hip hop museum off the ground, and they've failed. Maybe you know we can put together a, a good team and and be the ones that really get the museum finally off the ground. So I presented the idea to 
the founding members, which is Africa Bambada, Grand Wizard Theodore, Curtis Blow, myself, uh, Mickey Benson, Cutman LG, and Joe Conzo. I don't know if those brothers are on the phone, but we're the founding members, and we basically have been working on this project for the past two and a half, going on three years. So it's it's finally coming together. We put to, we, we put together a great team. Uh, we brought on clientele and, and Doug Young as the West Coast advisors. We got a couple other ca- cats up in uh, up up north. Uh, Arnold Brown, he's a lawyer in Silicon Valley, and Nasty Ness Rodriguez, who work with Sir Mix a lot. Those are some of the cats that are working with us on the phone with us tonight. I want to introduce Paradise Gray. Paradise Gray is the chief curator of the museum. Paradise, why don't you introduce yourself and tell me a little bit about what you do? Hey, Peace, how are you doing? Peace. Yes. Can you, <laughs> oh, you guys speak up, Paradise. Yeah, Peace, I'm the of the museum. Uh, I grew up in the Bronx, from the Bronxdale Projects, the same building in Mario as my mentor, also P. D. J. Jones. Mm-hmm. Grew up DJing, break dancing, MCing, you know, loving hip hop, living there as a culture. And uh I also uh director of the Latin Quarter during the golden era of hip hop of the group X Clan. Um as a little kid I grew up collecting comic books, amps, coins with my big brother, and all of that was kind of cool. So uh, one day I saw these hip-hop flyers. Me, the hip-hop flyers were like superheroes. So Grandmaster Flash, Theodore, you know, Melly Cal, all these guys were larger than life with the incredible uh, flyers that came out back in the day. So me and my friends, we started collecting the flyers, eventually collecting hip-hop magazines, posters, records, and uh, all these years later, 40 years later, here we are. Um, there's a lot of great hip out there and a lot of hip-hop memorabilia out there floating around. And um, it's grabbing and collecting these things and these big collections and colleges and but um with the universal hip hop opportunity to preserve our own culture to speak to put together a of our collected culture in our community accessible to young African American and Latino youth who created the culture. At the same time, it gives us a great opportunity to tell a broader story of hip hop beyond the Bronx and find the Africa yeah, band bottles, find the Africa right. band bottles that are out there in other parts of the world and tell the collective story of hip hop, the participatory nature of hip hop, where everybody's voice is important and everybody matters, not just the old school artists, but artists who are still making the music today. Right. And, speaking and, and speaking of, of uh, not to cut you off, but speaking of Africa Bambada, he's on with us right now. Welcome to the show, Africa Bambada. Welcome. Peace and Welcome. honor. Peace and honor to everyone. And I have my great brother, Paradise. <laughs> I'm in Rob. Peace, my brother. Yeah. Peace to everybody. Peace and honor to each and all. Peace and love. So, so I have a I have a question uh, for uh, you, you. You talked about accessibility now i I know recently uh the museum has been doing some wonderful things with technology and we have another uh one of our legends uh on here right now mr curtis blow who's been working with that technology uh can you guys just give us a little bit of uh you know insight on what's going on with that the vr technology well sure uh, rocky you want to go ahead curtis this is curtis well, basically, it's it's called VR, virtual reality. It's sort of like a 3D presentation of, let's say, some kind of film event or uh, 
a trailer or a presentation or anything like say if there was an event and we filmed it and then we put the virtual rea- reality twist to it that means that everything that you look at with these special client glasses that we have that if you turn around you can see 360 everything around you, you you're like in the room with that person who's talking so wow. you can wow. turn around and look behind you and see the scenery that's behind you which is the same scenery that is the scenery that you're looking at with this guy. He's in a place like, for instance, we did uh, a a virtual reality with Curtis Blow in the studio uh, that I recorded the song, If I Rule the World, right? So I'm in the studio, the same studio, and I'm talking about those old days and how we did it and how much fun it was and who else recorded there because Dougie Fresh at that time was recording the show there and, and the Fat Boys did their first two albums right there. So I'm telling everybody this story. But while I'm behind the microphone or maybe behind the board, you with these glasses on can look at my shoes. You know, you uh-huh. can walk behind me and, and, and see all the equipment that's there and – you can actually look up to the ceiling and see the lights. You can go to the window and look out the window. And when I'm in the oh. studio and I, I'm pointing I'm pointing to like, yeah, Dougie Fresh recorded right here. And then there's a, like a little break and we go into a Dougie Fresh thing and you can see the same kind of special effect 3D situation with Doug. And so it's, hmm. it's, it's, it's a basically a right. presentation that, that takes video – uh, uh, to the next level, and and this mm-hmm. is uh, definitely something special and important for the museum, just to be on 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 top of all of the new technology that's coming out. And I could definitely see the kids in the future, you know, just taking these, going to the museum, picking up a pair of these glasses, and click on Grandmaster Flash, click on Bambada, and then you hear Bambada talking, but. Bambada is in the same room, and you you can see all around him and everywhere. It's like you're right there with this presentation. So as we tell the history and and preserve and secure our history, that's a great way to do it with the modern technology of today, with the virtual reality. And it's uh, made by Google. Is that right, Rocky? Yeah. So uh, w- the company that uh, helped produce this virtual reality film for Curtis Blow is called the Curtis Blow VR Experience. It's actually available on Google Play. You can actually download it for free. But the company mm-hmm. that helped uh, produce it for us is called Framestore, and they're one of right. the biggest uh, special effects companies in the world. They produced the movie The Martian, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Gravity. So they're a top-notch VR studio. Virtual reality is uh, is going to be the thing of the future. What we produced is for Google Cardboard, which is a, a low-cost virtual reality viewfinder that's made out of cardboard. You stick your phone inside it, and it converts into a virtual reality experience, like Curtis was saying. So the way we look at the museum is we're going to launch a virtual museum this year that's going to be accessible on all mobile devices So you could be in Tokyo, you could be in Russia, you could be in Africa, Brazil, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and kids can get access to the virtual museum just by using their smartphones. So, you know, hip-hop was very innovative back in the day, like like Grand Wizard said. You know, he invented the scratch. And, you know, hip-hop basically is an art form that came from nothing and, and became one of the most popular art forms in the entire world. And we believe that using new technology like virtual reality is just another way to express hip hop using the latest advances in technology. Wow. So if if someone said to you, like hearing this broadcast, how do I get involved? How can I, you know, help, you know, the museum, how can I get in on the ground floor and, and, and help, you know, take, you know, take it to the next level and help you guys at the museum and everybody and all the wonderful work that you're doing. What what can I do to get involved? What would you tell them? Well, the first thing I would say is that, you know, we need to get the word out, more people to know about it, about us. But the main thing uh, for us right now, we're in fundraising mode. 
So, you know, we have to raise money to build uh, our virtual museum, raise money for the brick and mortar. You know, we hope to have a, uh, a building by 2018. We're looking at a building here in the South Bronx called, called the Old Bronx County Courthouse, which is a beautiful building. But, you know, in order to, you know, make these things happen, we have to raise a, a significant amount of money. So, you know, for, for the young guys and, and even for the, you know, established hip-hop heads, you know, the aerosol writers, the B-boys, B-girls, uh, turntable guys, and the MCs, the way they could get involved is they could, you know, uh, you know, contact us at the museum. You know, they could go to our website, www.uhhm.org. That's uhhm.org. They could learn about what we're doing. Reach out to any of the founding members. Uh, reach out to clientele if you're on the West Coast or Doug Young, and and, and get involved. There's, we're going to do events all around the country. Uh, you know, we're going to be uh, looking for collections. So if there's people out there that have photographs and, uh, you know, videos and documentaries that they want to have, uh, you know, archived or part of the museum's collection, they definitely need to reach out to us and get involved. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's definitely a, a must. Uh, you know, we have a huge, huge archive uh, uh of nothing but uh, you know pioneers and legends like yourself over at our website ugsforlife.com, we will definitely do what we can to promote this uh, hip hop museum. But I'm gonna throw a question out there uh, real quick, and whoever wants at it, whether it's uh, Africa Curtis, whoever, Grand Wizard, anybody uh, that's on the line, what what do you think about the state of hip hop now as far as um, the lack of substance in the mainstream? Because uh, right now I'm finding the best records in the underground, uh, the best uh, MCs I'm mm -hmm. finding in the underground right now. Uh, wh why do you think talent is being blocked? And, and even DMC said this on our show. He said that uh, even the pioneers were allowed to watch, but it's almost like uh, uh, they won't open the gates for us. Why, well, like they left what's going on here, guys? What are your thoughts on that? Well, well, let Bam answer. Um, Bam just Bam just go ahead, Bam. Bam just got here, so I think Bam should to answer it. Right. You still there? You still there, Almond Raw? Is he still there? <laughs> He's not. He might just hear me. Yeah, we can hear you, Bam. You can hear me. Yeah, we hear you now. Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. What I what I feel is going on is um, there's. People that sit up in these um, radio stations mm. who are programming the minds of the masses of the people. So if they want you to be in, and push the N-word or call women the B-words or just talk about kill, 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 there's a plan going on that's using that to also help make more jails and not to make jails on top of the ground, but to make jails to put many of our brothers and sisters in the ground. And if you're not programming to play old with the new, new with the old, for it becomes true school, then you're a part of a plot of a plan, what we call the Luciferians, who are trying to use hip-hop Mm-hmm. Yeah, you there? Yeah, we, we still... Van Bart, are you still there? Yeah, I think his phone... His phone was probably going going in and out, I think. The phone that he's on. Well, let me ask yeah. you this, Curtis, because, uh, um, you know, uh, you've been putting out records since, uh, since what, 1980, if I'm not mistaken? Um, mm hmm what, what do you feel about, you know what I'm saying? Do you kind of feel like... like some of these dudes are, are literally taking the, the, the bricks that you guys built and k taking them out of the foundation of hip-hop? Is that why it's so important well, for you guys to, to have this museum, the preservation? Uh, well, uh, yes, that's definitely one of the reasons uh, to have the museum is to, you know, preserve the history and keep it right um, and support the new talent that's out there 
uh, that are the key to the future. You know, um, um, just getting back to the state of hip hop today. You know, we obviously we live in what is called a generation gap. We got our old schoolers, then we got the new the new young schoolers, and you know they're making a whole lot of money. The 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 lyrics are. Uh, I mean, we could talk about lyrics all day. But let's just say there is a generation gap between, you know, the the pioneers and the new school. So in order for us to bridge the gap, the only way you can do it is with love. So I know that a lot of a lot of <clears throat> of my peers are frustrated, uh, stressed out. They don't like the new lyrics of today. They taking our our blood and sweat and our sacrifices and just you know this is what we're seeing today. And 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 it, and it hurts kind of, but in order for us to each one teach one and actually change this thing around and get back to uh, uh, what it was intended for, what it was created for, is just self-expression and trying to build up your community instead of breaking it down. Uh, uh, I think we need to do it within love, and we need to support the right. young people that are out exactly. there, you know, trying I'm to a, make I'm it and let them know, look, it, it's, it's going to be all right. Everything's going right. to be all right. You know, I'm I got co- you. I'm a co-sign. I'm a co-sign with Curtis. I think that one of the biggest problems when you talk about the state of hip-hop is that, you know, we we so quick to blame the youth and, you know, or, or whoever, what they're doing now. The key to it is education. This is why the University of Hip Hop right. Museum is so very important because we all so much get caught up in that one element of hip hop, and that's that rap element. We don't celebrate all the other elements that's important that make the the culture what it is. So like unless art. you know the right the the, the DJ um, scratching you know, the B girl the DJs the B boys whatever we don't celebrate all of it they they do it but they don't celebrate it knowing that these are all what made the culture what it is today so unless we you know educate and this is what the University of Hip Hop Museum is trying to do we have to educate we have to bridge bridge the gap as Curtis said in order for us to say listen. This is what we did. I come from the era of the 70s, you know, when, when I, I uh, from the inception of the culture, you know, out there on the uh-huh. streets in the park, you know, becoming the first female MC of, of hip-hop or the first female MC on national TV and all the other things. The People don't know that. They What they they know is what they used to, what is right in front of their face right now. So this goes what? out to every MC or DJ or everybody that's out there. You know, this is very important because it preserves your history as well. Because I'm the female that started the people. People don't know that. They only know what they hear from a certain point on. So unless we begin to embrace, you know, everybody, you know, the young kids or, or, or artists that's out there and, say, and just teach them, you know, educate them, let them know, you know, this is what it's all about. You can make good music. It's not always about the money because you can make a, a song and it could be a hit song today, but what is your legacy in the, raw, in the long run? And you want to be able to have that legacy in that museum or say, look, this is how I changed the game. Whether or not, you know, you, you made a couple of dollars, what did you do to change the game besides making a record that everybody bobbed their head to? That's what you want. And this is what that yeah, University so, Hip Hop Museum will be so about. It, 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 can you hear me now? Are you yeah. back, Bam? Yes, sir. Oh, okay, so. Yes, yes, add, you, add it on to now. the Queen and to Curtis and what they saying here, we also got to look at what's going on in the industry. What's okay. going on with these radio stations? What's going on with these program program the minds of the masses of the people? Why do you keep playing a certain style of of hip hop and you ain't playing all the different flavors of hip hop? Why are you not giving respect and still playing the true school along with the new school? This way they could have a balance. What we call the balance of Maya. They need a balance. If you're going to play something that's talking about kill, kill, kill and calling a woman a B-word, we want to hear something mm-hmm. where you, you, you're playing something where they're talking about 
the queen or some news on the radio mm -hmm. or talking about uh, what's going on in our community, playing all mm -hmm. the records, playing Public Enemy along with the T.I.s and playing whatever. We don't care if it's hip-hop, funk, soul, house, techno, rock, jazz, whatever. Play the old with the new, the new with the old, for it becomes true school. So we got to look at what's messing with the minds of our people. What's messing with the minds of all people? And why is this industry is like that? And why are you trying to keep negative going all the time? And mm -hmm. then that's helping to build more jails underground, not on mm -hmm. the ground, mm -hmm. and helping mm -hmm. to make more police to shoot more of our people. Yes, sir. And most of our people don't understand why there's so much killing of shooting black people because a lot don't understand the casual killing act of 1669. So we got to go back and even look up the laws and the cause and the codes that's been put out there to help destroy people, denationalize the people, and to bring people on the ground. And that's why the hip-hop museum is so important, not just mm -hmm. for old schools to make happen, but anybody out there, we don't care what music or whatever you're in, support True. to help get something that could help the people to do something, understand what the culture is, what it's about, and to help yep, ourselves. Absolutely. Co-sign. Yep. That's it. Yep. That's, That's it. why it goes back to the, you know, the education. You know, sometimes we can't really blame people for something that they don't know. You know, Absolutely. like Kurt said, it was it's a gen, it's a gener it was a generation gap. You know, and by it being a generation gap, it was a it was a big space there. You know, and and while that space was there, it should have been a lot of educating going on. Like in schools, like now they got they got hip hop classes in schools and and and. And every, every, everywhere I travel, I go to the college or I go to a classroom and and, and do a but, Q and A. But you and know the crazy, you know the crazy thing about that is mm. that you said colleges. My goal and what I would like and what I what I, what, what I'm hoping that you know we as the University of Hip Hop Museum would do is that mm -hmm. we don't wait for them to go to college. We take it to the grade school because a lot of mm -hmm. times young kids' mm -hmm. minds are already made up. You have to hit them when they are young. You, mm -hmm. Some some people cannot. Some kids cannot afford to go to college. Why do they right. have to wait to college to go and learn about the culture of hip -hop, hip hop? It should be in the grade schools from the ground up because this is the fastest growing genre of music ever. ever. And every child, you know, yeah. if they're three or four years old, they're mimicking, imitating every song better than they can do their own work. So we need to take care of those kids while they're young and teach them while they're young. That is the only way that was, I should say that's one way that you can change this whole way around of them thinking. Because right now, if whatever they see on TV or whatever they see, this is what they're learning. So you have mm -hmm. to educate them at an early age and not wait till they get to college or Ivy School College in order to say this is what the coach is about and everybody offer the opinion of how, mm -hmm. you know, all of this started, you know, from the you know, burn down buildings and all of that. No, hit them from the while they're young. Educate them while they're young. And this mm -hmm. is what I'm hoping that we will do also at the University of Hip Hop Museum is bring that knowledge to young kids as well. Yeah. So, so the museum it, seems it, to be. It will, it though. Seems to be I, a, I think it will. Yeah. Yeah, so the museum seems to be like a, a, a living, breathing organism. Like it's just, it's not just just preserving the history, but it's also educating, you know, other people. It's also, you know, having programs out there in the community where people can learn. And, and who, are, who are some of, who are some of the, the other, um, you know, people involved or any uh, corporate sponsors or any, any other than Google? Or, well, is this there is what involved? we want. A lot, of, a lot of corporate sponsors, a lot of corporate benefited from this culture. You understand? So we're asking, we're five you know, um, 5013C, we're asking them to donate to this museum, you know, and it's a charitable, we're charitable. Rocky, you can tell them exactly what they can do. They, If they want to give back and they truly, truly love the culture, this is one way that they can give back to the museum because it, it's for everybody. And, Rocky, you can take it from there. Mm -hmm. Rocky? Rocky? Rocky still there? He probably... Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree. You know, you you look at TV, you see the serial commercials, you see the you see right. the cartoons, you see Everyone the Mercedes Benz commercials, you see all these right. commercials that got that got hip hop in it and stuff like that. We also want to we also want to teach teach people, you know, that you know to go to the doctor's office and learn about diabetes and heart disease and exactly. and eat the right foods and and go mm -hmm. to the dentist and get your and get your teeth right and stuff like that. That's mm -hmm. why every time I go to the doctor's office, I ain't not ashamed of it. I post it. <laughs> I post it. 
You know what I'm saying? I went to the doctor's <laughs> office. It's the first of the year. I went to the right. doctor's office. I got I got myself checked out. Um, right. I, I, go, I go to the dentist, get myself checked out. Because I and, mean, a lot and, of people don't have a lot of people don't have health care. So this ways right, of getting right. health care, you, you know, you right. just got to get to the doctor's office, man, so that you know our brothers and sisters won't be we won't we won't look absolutely, up and see people absolutely. dying from high blood pressure and and, and diabetes and now, this and, and is the, stuff this like is that. You know, that we're doing. This is one of the things that we're doing in the women's committee. I've been appointed as the chair per, chairperson for the women's mm-hmm. committee. So I've created, you know, a. Uh, 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 slew of women, um, professional women, that right. we will come together to help preserve the women's side of, 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 of the culture as well. Yeah, but also in yeah. June, what we're having is, is a walk for life run, you know, where we, mm. we, we're doing, you know, um, um, targeting issues like that to bring, right, you know, right. forth to, to women, you know, in the community and men as well. So yeah, it's a lot of things yeah. that we're doing, but I'm, I'm, I really wanted Rocky to really, you know, try to explain. I, Rocky, are you on the line? Yeah, I'm here. I'm sorry. My, my mic, my well, he, mic was on yeah. mute. He, he, so, um, uh, he was talking about corporate sponsors. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I heard that. So, you know, uh, the museum is not just focused on the preservation of hip-hop. It's also focused on how do we put programming in place to help advance the future and make sure that the future of hip-hop is sustainable. Mm-hmm. You know, hip-hop is, is a global culture now, so... You know, we, we're teaming up with all different kind of companies who have benefited from hip hop. The sneak, the, the sneaker companies, the technology companies, the the motion picture companies, the fashion companies, the beverage companies. Mm-hmm. All these companies, basically every company that you could think about, has benefited from hip hop in some form or fashion. And we're yep. going to be creating pro, we're going to be creating programming that will allow these companies to underwrite exhibits, underwrite some educational programming, underwrite, uh, you know, live performances that we intend to do. The organization is also going to be at the forefront of creating content because I believe that, you know, we, we kind of like let, let the culture get away from us because we didn't, we didn't own a lot of what was being put out there. We let the record companies take over. We let the, the big companies like Viacom and, and Radio One and all these big corporations take over our culture, and therefore we lost control of it. With the museum and mm-hmm. with the people that we got involved, we got filmmakers, we got record producers, we got DJs and broadcasters, we, we can control our own destiny by controlling how the content gets published, how the content gets uh, distributed. Uh, mm-hmm. We can be... We could be at the center of all that. We have KRS-One who's going to oversee the education program, and, you know, he's the teacher, the master blaster. He's the, the philosopher of the, you know, of the culture. And between the other four founders and, and all the other people, we're going to put together a comprehensive educational program that will be a, a K through college kind of a curriculum so the kids in kindergarten will learn how to read and we'll use hip hop as a learning as a learning tool for, you know, kids to learn their vocabulary and learn the alphabet and learn how to put sentences together, do poetry. And mm-hmm. and for the college kids who are scholarly, we'll have, you know, uh kids will be able to go ahead and get their college certificates in hip hop. But you know, but uh from real teachers who lived and breathed the culture, not from some of the guys that are teaching in these in these colleges today who never stepped mm-hmm. into a hip hop club, you know. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we want to make this museum like like a clientele said and, and and like you said, you know, the host of the show. This is a living, breathing organization. Uh, it's not just a museum that's going to look backwards. We're going to have our hands in everything, but we have to start somewhere, and it starts with the launch of the virtual museum that we will have uh, uh, launching this year. So our focus is to raise money, and, you know, we're going to have a Kickstarter campaign that's going to launch on January 29th. So we're hoping that the Kickstarter campaign gets the word out all across the country and all across the world so that we can raise money for the Virtue Museum and, you know, give people jobs and, and provide opportunities for our brothers and sisters to come work for the museum and produce content and, you know, learn how to develop mobile applications instead of downloading, 
We're going to be at the center of creating mobile technology and doing all those kinds of things. So this is a very important uh, project that we're working on. Uh, you know, we have the legends. We have, you know, this is one museum that people won't be able to say, well, you know, are the, are the four founders, are the people who created the culture behind this project? Yes, they are. But we, we also want the new guys like the Kendrick Lamars and the J. Coles and, uh -huh. you know, you know, all the, you know, the loopy fiascos and the logics and all these up and coming MCs and DJs to get involved with the museum as well. What are some of your, your financial goals right now? What, are, what do you see? Uh, what, what do you need in terms of uh, funding? Well, for the Virtual Museum, you know, for this year, we have to raise about $5 million. But for the brick and mortar, you know, when we, uh, you know, uh, move to the brick and mortar phase, you know, uh, the budget for that is about $20 million. $20 million. We, we have a budget that we submitted to, you know, to the state of New York, you know, because, we're, you know, the building is here in New York. So, we, you know, we have uh, the support of uh, Assemblyman Michael Blake and the governor's office is looking at it. The city of New York is also, you know, trying to figure out how to give us some, you know, funding to, to help get this project off the ground. But really, you know, truthfully speaking, you really don't need the state. You don't need these corporations. If everybody in the world got together and wanted to, you know, put money behind this project, we could raise money just through a grassroots campaign, you know, with all the people that have that love hip hop and support hip hop. If everybody put a dollar, two dollars, three dollars you know, behind the project, this project will be funded overnight. That's how simple mm -hmm. it is. Absolutely. Yep. And that's why it's good that we are, you know, we are here talking about this right now because it's, it's just like we ain't going to stop, you know. We are definitely not sure. going to stop, you know. I want my kids to be able to go and and <laughs> – and, and look at the the, the 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 leather suits we used to wear back in the days, and the tuxedos we used to wear when we battled the mm -hmm. cold crush at the <laughs> at the Harlem World. And people <laughs> probably saying, "Well, why they call it Harlem World? You know, we want people to be able to go to the museum right. and 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 answer any questions. You know, what kind of microphones you guys used back in the days? What kind of turntables you guys used? You know, I mean." Um, where did you buy your vinyl from? We want every question about hip hop to be answered. You know, when you guys were writing your rounds, what did you use? We used loose leaf paper, like you know, the, the loose leaf paper we buy from school, you know, and stuff like that. And if you guys play music in the park, then where did you get electricity from? Did you use um, did you use generators? No, we use the uh, we use the street poles. You know, or well, sometimes we was able to plug it in um, um, someone's mom's or someone's aunt's house and and give them like twenty, thirty dollars and stuff like that, and just and just use their yeah. equipment and stuff like that. You know, yeah. and Thank when y'all when you, yeah, 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 that's right. <laughs> when you guys made you flyers, know, who who made the flyers? We we got the graffiti artists to make the flyers for us because they were good at flyer. making flyers. <laughs> yeah, you know, stuff like that. So we want people to be able to go in and just ask. So many different questions about hip hop, but we could just go on for days and and days and days with the with the uh, with the history and the knowledge and stuff like that, you know. One more important point that I want to make. One more important point that I want to make about the University Hip Hop Museum, and and one of my goals is, you know, hip hop is uh, is an art form that, you know is all over the world now. You know, it may have started in the Bronx, but now it's in every corner of the world. But the problem with hip-hop is that we're not united as a culture. You know, we don't really have a lot of unity. So, mm -hmm. you know, with the, uni with the Universal Hip-Hop Museum, we want to bring everybody back together. And, and you, know, you know, basically like how BAM started the Zulu Nation, we want to use the Universal Hip-Hop Museum as the center of hip-hop and bring yep. everybody back together so that we can support the preservation and the and the sustainability of hip hop culture. So it doesn't matter if you're on in Compton or Oakland mm -hmm. or Seattle or Atlanta or Miami, we want everybody to be part of the Universal Hip Hop Museum. That's why Absolutely. you know, I reached out to Nindaba Mandela, the grandson of uh Nelson Mandela, the world's greatest uh, you know, leader uh of our time. His mm -hmm. grandson, 
Ndaba Mandela is now vice chairman. And, you know, it's all about peace, love, and unity, you know, the yep. core principles uh, uh, of what the, you know, what hip hop was founded on. We want to bring it back to its roots so that, so that the kids today can have a, a higher level of understanding of what hip hop really is. Yep. Yep. That's what it is. Yep. That's definitely what it is. And, and, and much respect to, to Africa no. Bambada for really, you know, um, making that, you know, essence of hip hop, peace, unity, and fun. You know, I, I mm-hmm. thank you, Bam. Yeah, that's 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 someone that's someone that deserves a Nobel Peace Prize. Someone that that Absolutely. does that does something like that. You know, that's that's what it's all about. Something like that changed the world. It saved a lot of lives. You know, it, it, so so something like that. That's that's. That's Nobel Peace Prize right there, if you ask me. With all of us. Go, 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 go ahead, our, I said that's definitely with all of us putting our love to this and showing that is what they, the difference of what was back then to what they try and portray now, because they, they always want to show you a negative side of things dealing with hip hop uh, movement or culture instead of showing how much hip-hop has saved so many people's lives. I mean, mm-hmm. we all hear yeah. this when we travel and go places, how people come yep. up to any of us, Theodore, the Rock, all of us, that, you know, you saved my life. You, I could have been this. I could have been in jail. I could have been a killer, a shooter, and this and this, whatever. And they show in different countries and places how it changed life. It uplifted people. People started doing things. People in other places started organizing. And and when you go outside the country, you, you really see how many people know your story and history more than the people that's in the United States. It's like, what was your what was your um, big last record? But outside, they study the history, they study the culture, they study the movement, they study what the groups was about. So this shows you what hip-hop as a movement, as a culture did to save so many people's lives on the planet. Sure. Right. Yeah, right. You sure don't know what to say. That's real yeah, shit. Yeah. But see, I always, I always look at it like with, with a museum and everything. Like me being a thirty-seven-year-old man, and I got a seventeen-year-old son, and I got an eleven-year-old son. Like if, when I'm telling him about the music, well, when he asks me why I'm listening to this and that, like when y'all, what, what y'all have in this museum, I can show him. Mm-hmm. You know, because these kids, they it's easy to hear things, but they want to see shit too. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like this, this, this is a generation of, and I live in Missouri. This is Show Me State. They want to see what you got. All that talk is fine, but if they can't see mm-hmm. it, 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 it goes well, without like saying Curtis because they, say. their attention span is real short nowadays. You know, like Curtis was saying, they, they want to be tantalized with seeing shit. That's mm-hmm. virtual reality type stuff that you can actually interact. You know what I'm saying with the the, the beginnings of hip hop. I mean, who wouldn't who, who wouldn't want to experience that if they love hip hop? You know. Oh yes. So I look forward to this. Now, where where you, you said where's the location museum going to be again? The, the the brick and mortar is going to be in the South Bronx. Uh, it's called the Old Bronx County Courthouse. Uh, we're trying to secure a lease now with the owner of that building. But this year, people will be able to go to the museum through their smartphones. So they'll be able to go right on their phone, download our, our virtual museum, and get the same kind of experience that they would get in the brick and mortar, but in a very innovative kind of way. Yeah. So I, I, it- I would say for, for, for the kids that are out there, go check out the Curtis Blow virtual reality experience for Google Cardboard. You could download that at, at on the Google Play Store. Uh it's an it's an app that people can download and check that out and uh and and get a, a true virtual reality experience. Get a get a preview of what's coming. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, if people want to find out more information about the museum, uh, give them all the information, too, if they want to donate again as well. want to make sure that they uh, – and anything helps, folks. A dollar, $50, whatever you got. Yeah, so, you know, you can, you can, you can make donations, a dollar, $2, $5, whatever you have. 
If you want to make a donation, just go to www.uhhmorg. Uhhm.org. Definitely, definitely. Uh, I, I definitely want to thank everybody for taking the time out to uh, come uh, on the show tonight. Uh, clientele, I want to thank you for putting this uh, all together. Um, no problem. Everybody that called yeah, in, thank I you believe, guys. Thank uh, you. we've had uh, Paradise Gray, uh, Africa Bambada, Shah Rock, uh, Grand, West, uh, Grand Wizard Theodore, Curtis Below. Um, who, who am I missing here, guys? Rocky, Rocky McConnell. Rocking the condo. We need to have all y'all on individually as well, too. LG, 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 Phil? LG. LG, Phil? LG, Phil? If they ain't, if they ain't, they can come back. That, that's what we do here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you guys have definitely got a platform here. Uh, you know, hopefully we can have KRS-1 come on in the future as well. And, uh, I, de- I definitely appreciate all of you for taking time to come on the show tonight. And uh, anybody, uh, uh, we'll Absolutely. start off with uh, you. whoever, you, you social media, websites, just start naming it off. Oh, well, I mean, I mean, I mean, the main focus, I mean, the main focus right now is for everybody to, to go to UHHM. You know, dot com and stuff like that. Dot, um, dot org. Dot org. Y- yeah, dot org and stuff like that, and 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 that's the that's the main focus. Uh, you know, of what we trying to of what we trying to do right now. I mean, basically, we we are we're not hard to find. You know, we can you know go on Facebook and find us, and we got Instagram accounts and everything. And once you once you punch in our name to the computer, I mean, basically, you light up with 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 with, with uh, contacts and. And, and 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 stuff like that, you know. I just hope that everybody will realize that this this museum is not for us. This is for everybody. Everybody that's into this into this culture, into this art form. All the b boys, all the graffiti artists, all the DJs, all the MCs, all the beatboxers, all the people that's teaching knowledge about hip hop. This is what this museum is going to be. So that's that's what it is, you know. Yeah, all the skateboarders out there too. We we don't want yeah. to leave them out. Yeah, definitely, definitely not. You know, just everybody that's involved with this culture. And, you know, that's what it's for. You know. Exactly, and while we give them props to the founders of hip hop, Africa Bambada, who cool hurt Grandmaster Flash. DJ Hollywood, P. D. J. Jones, Disco King, Mario, Grandmaster Flowers. While we bigging up the Disco Twins, we also gonna give props to the masters whose backs we built hip hop on. The Grand Masters of Hip Hop, James Brown, Sly and the Family Absolutely. Stone, you know, Absolutely. the last poet. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna tie hip hop's timeline into the greater culture of the. African diaspora worldwide, where hip hop comes from, where the That's soul right. of hip hop comes from, connect right. the dots because hip hop did not come from nothing. Hip hop came on the backs of the greatest masters to ever create Absolutely. music and culture. You know, Michael Jackson, Prince, all of these great people like Sly and the Family Stone, Earth, Wind, and Fire, and we're going right. to tie it all yeah. together. Because we yep. were we were groomed and we were grown on Bob Marley. We were groomed mm-hmm. and we were grown yep. we were grown on Beatles and, and many incredible artists like Joe Tex and Steve yep. Thunder. Absolutely. You know, pick up uh, pick, pick, pick me Markham and, and Dolomite and Dolomite and stuff like right that. Muhammad, you know? Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Yep. Word. Yeah. Up to Muhammad yes, Ali. Yes, yes. You know, we're gonna tie it all together and show people that hip hop comes from our soul and our roots and the fruits don't fall far from the roots. You know what right. I'm saying? So we right. are who we yeah. are and we we have a great accomplishment that we created in this world that is called hip hop. And I'm yes. just glad that the pioneers are still alive so that I could give my contribution and my love directly to them. And the museum's bigger than just pictures and stuff hanging on walls. We sure, have the sure. real Curtis Blow. We have the real Africa Bambada, the real Jazzy J, the real Theodore, the real Flash, the real Melly Mel. They are still alive. 
And we have yeah. an opportunity to give them flowers while they're still living rather than us blogging how much sorry donkey tears into a bucket after they're dead. Yeah. We love you, AJ. We love all our pioneers that passed away, and hopefully we'll get this done in your lifetime while y'all still living and breathing and y'all can enjoy the fruits of your creation. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And yes, by sir. the way, a big shout out. And by the way, go ahead, Ben. By the way, Van Glorious, this is protected by the red, the black, the black, and the green, and the green. <laughs> the green. The <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, man. Yes, yes, yes. Man, big that shout out so, to everybody so, who's we're on the show. Do something like that. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey, friends, uh, let me get my brother's site, uh, MikeDream.com. You know, it ain't really fully built, but we're getting it up this year. This is the year we're going to launch a whole new web campaign with it. MikeDream.com. Most com. definitely, MikeDream.com. Also, uh, don't forget to go to... Uh, you know, UGSforlife.com, and we're going to link up with uh, UHHM.org. You know what I'm saying? Check out the uh, Universal Hip Hop Museum. And uh, thanks again, guys, for coming on this show. This is uh, definitely a historical moment. See, this is a, a, I don't see places like MTV and, you know, doing enough things like this, so I'm glad we were able to do it right here, UGSforlife.com. Thank you. We're out. Thank All right. Thanks, everybody. UGS for Life. You right. motherfucker, man. UGS for Life.